Know yourself. Be yourself. Love yourself. Know who you are in God. Be who you are unapologetically and love yourself wholeheartedly. I am Kimberly Joy and I thank you for listening to the Kimberly Joy Show. And God, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. We thank you for your love, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of salvation. We thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing your life on the cross in our place so that we might have a chance at eternal life so long as we believe. Lord God, as I share this message you have given me, I pray that those who are listening will be encouraged, will be inspired, will receive exactly what they need. And if there's anyone who has not accepted you, Jesus, as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray that they will make the decision today to receive you and to live for you. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Saturday, October 5th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Come on out to our church, Power and Faith Ministries for another Soul Food Saturday. We will have fish dinners for $15, jumbo chicken wing dinners for $20, and you have a choice of grilled or fried, and rib dinners for $25. Each dinner will include two sides, bread, and a drink. We will also have homemade cake for $6 and kids meals for $6. And the kids' meals include fish sticks or chicken rings, fries, applesauce, and a drink. We accept cash, debit cards, and cash app. Our cash app is dollar sign power and faith. That is dollar sign P-O-W-E-R-A-N-D-F-A-I-T-H. For questions or to place your order, please call 513-696-2170. Again, that is 513-696-2170. And we will be at Power and Faith Ministries, 8120 Hamilton Avenue, Mount Healthy, Ohio, 45231. And we are in the Hilltop Plaza. So again, that will be Saturday, October 5th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Power and Faith Ministries on Hamilton Avenue and Mount Healthy. Come on out and bring folks with you. In Acts chapter 21. While Paul was traveling to Jerusalem with some of his brothers in the Lord, he stopped in Caesarea and he stayed at the home of Philip the Evangelist. While Paul was there in Caesarea, he met a prophet by the name of Agabus. Agabus prophesied to Paul that once he got to Jerusalem, he would be arrested by the Jews and then turned over to the Gentiles. Well, naturally, those that heard about this prophecy They tried to convince Paul not to go to Jerusalem. However, Paul was committed. And so he said that he was ready to go to jail and to even die for the sake of Jesus Christ. Now, when Paul got to Jerusalem, he met with James and the other elders there. Now, this James was the half-brother of Jesus, as well as the head of the church in Jerusalem. Paul told them how God had been using him to minister to the Gentiles and how many of them were giving their lives to Christ. And they praised God for the work Paul had been doing. They then told Paul that thousands of Jews had also become followers of Christ and that these same Jews were also devoted to the law of Moses. They then informed Paul of a rumor that had been circulating about Paul. Apparently, Paul was being accused of not only teaching Gentile believers that they did not have to follow the law of Moses or the Jewish laws, but that he was also telling Jewish believers that they no longer had to follow the Jewish laws. For instance, Paul was being accused of telling parents that they didn't have to have their children circumcised. Now, for Paul to be accused of telling Christian Jews that they did not have to follow the law of Moses anymore was a pretty serious accusation. Back in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse five, it says that if a prophet tried to lead God's people astray, that that prophet would be put to death. And so for Paul to tell the Jews to no longer follow the the Jewish law was like leading God's people astray, or at least that's how they viewed it. So James and the other elders had a suggestion. In Acts 21, verse 23, they said this to Paul. We have four men here who have completed their vow 
And many commentators believe that they were talking about the Nazarite vow. The Nazarite vow, and I quote, is taken by individuals who have voluntarily dedicated themselves to God. The vow is a decision, an action, and a desire on the part of people who desi whose desire is to yield themselves to God completely. And as followers of Christ, we should be totally devoted, totally yielded to God. Then they went on to say to Paul, we want you to go with these four men to the temple and join them in the purification ceremony. Then everyone will know that the rumors about you are all false and that you do follow the Jewish laws. Now, although Gentile believers were not expected to follow the law of Moses because they were not born Jews, they were given these instructions in verse 25. Number one, do not eat any food offered to idols. Number two, do not eat blood or the meat of strangled animals. And number three, do not engage in sexual immorality. Then in verse 26, it says that Paul agreed with their suggestion. And the very next day, he went to the temple with the four men for their purification ceremony, which was to last for seven days. Again, Paul was accused of teaching Jews that once they chose to follow Jesus, they did not have to follow the Jewish laws or the laws that had been given to Moses years ago for God's people. Now, while these accusations about Paul were false, the believers didn't necessarily need to follow all those Jewish customs anymore. Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 17, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. In other words, Jesus came to complete it. A prime example of Jesus completing the law or fulfilling the law was when he died on the cross. Once Jesus did that, once he gave up his life for us, Animal sacrifices, which were a part of the Jewish law, were no longer needed. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 and 12 say, Under the old covenant, or under the law of Moses, the Jewish laws, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. Verse 12, But our high priest, or Jesus, offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. So we thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for sacrificing your life on the cross, your fleshly body on our behalf, in our place, so that all of us who wholeheartedly believe in you can now be saved and gain eternal life. I want to thank you for listening to today's broadcast. Now, if you are ready to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and become a part of the family of God, please pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were buried in the tomb. And I believe you rose again three days later. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my life and be my Savior and my Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I am now saved. Now I do encourage you to attend a good Bible-believing church. You are more than welcome to visit us, Power and Faith Ministries with Apostle Ron and Pastor Jerry Banks. Again, we are located at 8120 Hamilton Avenue, Mount Healthy, Ohio, 45231 in the Hilltop Plaza. We have Sunday service at 10 a.m. To contact me, please email the Kimberly Joy Show at gmail.com or call 513-417-0097. You may follow the Kimberly Joy Show on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You may donate to the Kimberly Joy Show on Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal. And now here is Bridget Hurt singing My Liberty. 